A warm welcome to a pub full of saints, number 30 of a 2021-22 season. 30, who thought we'd get that far? Good grief. Anyway, uh, my name's David Turner. I'm joined by, it says on the screen there, Jacob Ellicott. Hello, Dave. Hello, everyone. You're very dark, Jake, and I must say, much better like that. And uh, over there, we have uh, Lee Wood. Are we ready for the next 40 minutes of joyous, buoyant commentary about how the Mighty Saints are getting on? Well, we've got a fantastic uh, little run here to look back on, haven't we? We're looking back over three games. Uh, Saturday, Chesant at home in the FA Trophy. Monday, Chelmsford City away in the National League South. Tuesday, home to Hitchin Town in the Hearts Senior Cup. And the number of wins we got to feast on from both three games. Oh. Um, blank. We'll kick off Saturday then. This was this a big one? I don't know. Kevin Mudd said players like cup games, don't they? Like to win cups rather than leagues. Uh, we thought we got a decent draw. Chesnut on a good run. Their good run is going. Beat us 3 0. And I think 3 0 flattered us, didn't it? I mean, Lee, do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I said to one or two um, supporters on the way out that. I could have left that ground having lost a game 5 or 6 nil, and I wouldn't have had any arguments at all, really. It was probably the most gutless performance under Ian that I've seen. Um, even the hardcore sort of, you know, club supporters, they were turning as well. But it, I think it was just a performance, Dave. I mean, you know, we've seen some dross in our time, mate, but that was, we didn't even get going at all. We had squandered our best chances in the first half. But other than that, mate, it was pretty woeful stuff, wasn't it? It was. The supporters I was standing next to, one of them right at the end, John Holder, had said, uh, go to town on that one. Which we can do. We, we gained nothing from it. But that's what it deserved. It was so completely inept. Uh, you were standing in a different part of the ground to me. Uh, Jake, what did you make of it? Yeah, I, I can only echo. I mean, I have to say, under Ian, I think that was one of the worst performances I've seen in a long time. It had echoes for me back to Whitehawk at home. I think four or five years ago now when the Saints were chasing the playoffs and on that day they just didn't turn up and they just fell apart against the side that I think had been relegated for about a month beforehand and you know we shouldn't put Chesant down they played really well they're a good team they had really good support there as well first goal absolutely cracker as well but the way the Saints just that second half awful you know first half tight but we had chances I thought at half time we'd come out and respond even after the first goal I expected a response just wasn't there, was it? And it's like Lee says, just gutless and just no passion or drive. And I saw on the forum afterwards, I think there was a comment saying, oh, does anyone really matter about the trophy? Does anyone really care? People do care. 900 people turned up on Saturday. Good crowd for the trophy. Got behind the Saints. And you could see at the end how angry and disappointed Saints fans were about that. Because you're not far from Wembley. And yeah, just really poor. But fair play to Chesham. You know, they did all they had to do. But the Saints just rolled over. To be honest with you, Jake, it sounds as though that that the fans gave a shit more than what the players did, mate, because their application was next to none, um, which is disappointing, really, because you expected a, a bit more out of our side. And, I, I, you know, I got a, the odd comment or two on social media when I, I said that I demanded a little bit more from my team in situations like that. Um, yes, we lose games. We know that. That's just part of it. But it was, it's the way we lose games. And there was just no desire at all. And uh, it was a real disappointing day to be a City fan last Saturday. It, it's funny, isn't it? Uh, early in the season, we were seeing poor first half performances. And the second half, we were turning it around. We're not now. Hamill Hemmets did roll us over second half. <coughs> Chesnut rolled us over second half. Uh, we were fortunate at uh, Welling United to get the win there. They had good chances to turn that around. It, you don't know to say the wheels have come off, but uh, it's not looking good, is it? And we, we, our record against size in the top half of the table isn't great. So where you, we're going to turn it around, goodness knows. Tavs, this is, it's very much seen as an entertainment business or a results business. And at the minute, we're getting neither, you know. And, and the solution is down to the manager. And I'm now glad that he's come out and highlighted the fact that the, that the club and the team uh, need that injection of personnel quality personnel as well you know because there were people sort of criticizing some of the chants coming out of the terraces about asking where where's the where's the money gone you know we need these players 
Um, we see that Neil Metcalf this week has been tweeting that Sam Cox has been touted, touted around. Well, that's the sort of player we need. You know, we need experienced but young players to come in who can hit the ground running and help turn our season around because we are in serious, serious um, a position where our whole season can become derailed quite quickly. Can't argue with that, can you, Jake? No, not at all. And I say we'll talk about Charles and me and what he said afterwards. But yeah, these second halves, the last couple of games, really concerning. And speaking to a few people at Chelmsford, I think the disappointing thing is another really good crowd and the Saints just totally fall apart, you know. And you're you know, I think we even heard some discontent from the O's younger supporters on Saturday, which did surprise me. Um and that is Well today, no. Well, <laughs> exactly. But of course it's going to be a concern for the club because the club is moving forward off the pitch. But if you don't match that on the pitch, then that's an imbalance that doesn't really work for me and is not going to get you where you want to go. Moving forward off the pitch? In what way? Well, stuff like in Shikari, crowds are up, etc. You know, we can't argue the crowds are really good this season. You know, stuff like that. But people, like Lee just said, it's an entertainment business. They come to enjoy their Saturday afternoons, something to do even in the pouring rain and terrible weather. i tell you what, there was a really good point. I don't know who he is, but he's, who stood behind us, Jake, on Saturday. And he said, well, if the owners can't be bothered to invest into the club, then why should I be investing into the team as well? You know, why should I pay my money at the turnstile if the, bothers, the owners can't be bothered? To, I'm not saying can't be bothered, but there's a, a, a slow, slow release of the finances to Ian. And Ian's very, very clever. He bought himself some time in the week. They come out with a statement saying, yes, we are going to get players in, but it's a patience game, um, which means that probably gives them another week or two to uh, to sort of have a little skulk around and see who's available. But, but this bringing in of new players, we've harped on about it for ages. Not just us, because all supporters have spotted, seen all through the season. That side has deficiencies. It got away with it for a long time. Maybe getting away with it is the wrong phrase, but... It's true, they, did. they weren't winning games in style. Some of them they did, but overall they were grinding out a lot of results. And you could see them, the uh, shortages in the team, and they weren't addressed then. Uh, all right, you say Ian's come out with a statement now. Um, he's got his work cut out. He's, he's, he's got to bring the players in. He just can't say it, can he? He's got to do it. And will the club support him to do it? Well, I mean, he said again, he indicated that the owners are now willing to support it. I mean, they may have been willing to support it for a few months. We don't know. But in the statement, he did give. So hopefully, and we know, we spoke to a few people, Dave, or, or at least I have, that have mentioned they've seen Ian at other games recently, sort of scouting players, looking at potential who can pick up. So, you know, and Ian and, and his coaching team as well. So we'll see. I mean, I think everyone, everyone knows the squad needs help. The current players, good players in there, but they need help. They can't do it just on their own. And the academy lads, we love them. They're doing really well. But you can't be relying on 17-year-old, 18-year-olds coming on in the National League South, a very tough division. You know, it's you need that experience. And we've been lacking it lately. Are we lacking a leader on the pitch amongst all the other things? But, I mean, without David Noble, potentially. I don't yeah, know what Jay, you think, the, the thing, Yeah, the, what, as I was just going to say to you there, mate, David Noble, on his day and fit is one of the best midfielders in the entire league. However, those days are dwindling and they're dropping off the off, off, off the charts, mate, because the thing is, he is a leader and he is a leader, but he can't be, he can't lead from the stands injured. You know, it's Tom Bender came on as a late substitute on Saturday to sort of maybe install some urgency into the, game but again that's too late and we needed goals not really leadership didn't we really so that's another question we need do we need strikers as well to help uh, it's not a quick fix it's never going to be um good players cost money luckily we've got a bit of it um but it's just now a matter up to ian uh, and chris to go around and recruit them you said about ian um tom bender coming on Substitutions, people are, are asking about them. Could we make them earlier? But when you look at the bench, we haven't got a lot of attacking options on there to bring on. You might have some wideish midfield players, but you've got no one who's going to start banging in the goals for you. I, I agree. I think on Saturday, it would have been nice to see Liam Soul and Romeo Akinola brought on a bit earlier. 
But then think about it, did Ian have an eye on Monday night? Once it got to 2-0, did he think, I want to rest these guys and get them ready for Monday night? So, you know, I, I don't know. You cut out there, Jake. And, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, we're not excited by it. <laughs> it was a mention of Romeo Akinola, though, saying it was some brain farts. <laughs> oh, um, we went over to uh, Chelsea City on Monday, hot on the heels of a Chesant game, and was there an improvement? No. Well, we had basically two attacks, one of which didn't make it onto the highlights when uh, Sean hit the crossbar. He got our goal with a great breakaway. Did we deserve a point there? No, on chances, no way whatsoever. No, I mean, Chelsea controlled a lot of it, didn't they? We have to say. Um, Sean took his goal brilliant, a great move. But the first, even the first 20 minutes of the game, it was almost corner after corner to Chelmsford, wave after wave. They didn't have many clear-cut chances. We were talking about this, weren't we, Dave? Like, Mike Johnson had a lot of loopy efforts to save. They weren't clear-cut. But the way Chelmsford just controlled the ball and almost controlled the game at times was worrying. And, you know... Ian again said how proud he was to get a point away from home on a cold Monday night in Essex against a tough team. Fair enough. And it was a point. But I think, again, the defending for their goal, just so poor, really. So alarming. Like, at the start of the season, you know, the fence was looking OK, but it's just gone to pot at the minute, isn't it? It's just all over the place. Well, it was a missed kick by uh, Dave Deleuze, wasn't it? But what a fantastic strike. Oh. You've got to give Simeon Jackson credit for that. Absolutely superb strike. And I, I would say, Dave, talking about leaders, they're number 20 at centre-half. He's nothing special, but someone like that, I can't remember his name, I'm sure you've got his name there. Um, it was Dave Winfield, captain, of course. Big, strong, commanding, shouting, organising everything, centre-half. It might not be ideal, and it might not necessarily be the player that Ian wants at the back, but you could see with how many high balls he won and how he's commanding that back line, how good he was. And even though Chelsea are struggling... You know, someone like that, I think, would be a massive help to this Saints side at the minute. Yeah, you said earlier about a good side like Chelmsford, or I don't know if you quoted Ian the Saints, a good side like Chelmsford, whichever. Uh, looking at their record this season, that's a tad generous. I know they're on, <laughs> on an upturn in results of late, but uh, they have a sort of side, you know, where you want, certainly at least a point, which is what we got, was I suppose a good result to look at it like that, but the performance didn't warrant it at all. No, but You'll take it, though, won't you? At the end of the day, a point away from home wasn't a defeat. You know, Lee, what did you think watching the highlights and sort of the reaction afterwards? To be honest with you, fellas, we've often um, compared to watching City to uh, as watching being in a car crash. But I think that you two fellas took it to a whole new level <laughs> on Monday night, didn't you? So, um, but I thought it, it, it didn't come, come across well. You are there, mate? You okay? Yeah. You, yeah. you said yeah. um, it didn't come across well. And what normally happens with this side in, in particular is that we have a bad result or bad performance and we come back with a win, a plucky little win and it sort of papers over some cracks for a week or so and then we get back into the process of the routine. There's absolutely no consistency in this side whatsoever. Um, did the quick turnaround help or hinder us? I don't. I mean, to be fair, we didn't, we didn't lose. We yeah. didn't lose. Uh, but... Given their current upsurge, they're still a really, they're not the Chelmsford teams that we would have played over the past three or four years, and it would have won. At, 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 sorry, we won against Chesham. It would have given us that that, that that confidence, that drive to go into the game, and maybe it stems from there. Maybe we get the three points. Um, that's how it's so annoying that we took the trophy game so lightly, because again, wins breed confidence, and that could have kicked our season on again. Yeah, did we take it lightly or are we just not good enough at the moment? We can have results. Either way, it's not pretty, is it? <laughs> no, it's pretty. No, I mean, sorry, Dave. I was just going to say, Lee, you talk about confidence. I mean, Ian made five changes for the Chelsea game, didn't he? You know, quite swinging changes for Ian. He doesn't normally make that many. And maybe that is a tell that certain players are lacking confidence and he wants the other players to come in and try and claim those spots. Um, but I don't think anyone really did that on Monday night. You know, it was only really Jeffers that particularly stood out. They did, right. Um, you look at that side for Monday and you think five changes. Is it just because it's two games in three days or is it a reaction to Saturday? Who knows? Uh, Novi, David Noble was on the bench on Saturday, not on Monday. Uh, Ian told us he had a groin strain, slight yes. groin injury. Yeah. Um, 
we should preserve it. <laughs> um, he was on the bench Saturday, not Monday. I think, yeah, I think Ian said he's hopeful of getting him back soon, isn't he? Yeah. He's just trying to manage it. And he said, I think uh, he said at his age, you know, one day he might be fine, the next day he <laughs> might not be. But at 40 years old, we'll, we'll, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll get there. And what about Chesney then? Tom Gardner and uh, Taylor Miles. Uh, Taylor, he worked his cotton socks off, didn't he? And Tom Gardner, he, he didn't look that troubled at the back. He Playing it around very gently under no pressure. But again, that comes back to it was us really, wasn't it? On Saturday, to be honest, we didn't really put them under much pressure. A couple of chances we did have in the first half, but otherwise, as you say, the centre halves had a pretty quiet afternoon. And sort of speaking to some Chesant fans in the horn afterwards, they were, they were straight up there again. Was that your first team? Was that genuinely your strongest team? <laughs> and we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, they were like, we've, we've. This is the best we've ever played all we've played all season. We can't believe we've just beaten you guys. <laughs> and you know, Chesnut are going well in the league below. So you know, best of luck in the next round away at some big club called Stockport. Never heard of it. What a day out that would have been. Uh, and that, oh, we've done that, it that, once, Lee. I know, but it just grates even more, doesn't it? Because oh my lord, that just been a, would have been a good day out. There'd have been oh, scenes, absolute scenes. We would have taken a few hundred up there at the absolute least. Um, oh, geez, but but you but you you play in the trophy for, for days like that, for games like that, mm-hmm. and uh, it just galls Saturday's result even more because it was just non existent performance from our boys. Um, but what we have to do now is just rekindle that faith that we've got and and sort of get our get our league campaign back on track now, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chesham's first goal was scored by Reese. Beckles Richards, former City tries, of course, and the other two were by Rowan Lybird, who was on the bench when we beat Billericay Town 4 1 down the park early in the season. Good grief, did we used to win home games? <laughs> it's, a, it's a shock, isn't it? Oh, uh, no City rejects in the uh, Chelmsford lineup, though. Um, disappointing. Very disappointing, yes. Uh, on to Tuesday, then, uh, Hearts Senior Cup. Uh, Hitchin Town. They picked up three wins and a draw from their last four games going into that one. But before that, they've had a dire season. We put out a mixed side, which is fair enough, I think, for uh, that competition. Bear in mind, third game in four days. But, all right, we took it to penalties. But that second half, Fishing should have won it. A number of scrambles in our goal mouth. Lee, you were there. Jake wasn't, I don't think. It was a very entertaining game, to be fair, especially in the first half, you know. And I thought thought that our young stars applied themselves relatively well you know there's lots of movement lots of lots of eagerness to impress Dean Austin I was sort of chatting very very briefly on the way through and and he was sort of casting his eye over over things but um, no it was okay it, it was it was okay you can see the difference in class between our first team stars and their academy stars obviously uh, but Hitchin and no mugs they they put themselves around a bit and it, they they played their part in what was a very enjoyable cut side I thought they put some great through balls through yeah. uh, over the top and along the ground. And uh, if they carry on like that, they're going to get out of trouble. And uh, yeah, yeah. it was good to see them playing like that. Shame you yeah. couldn't bother Jake, but you know, there you go. Well, I wasn't, you know, I just wasn't really feeling it, Dave, I'll be honest. <laughs> was, he, was he sort of still on the bypass somewhere in Essex? Did you sort of like <laughs> leave him there? Yeah, still <laughs> scraping him up. <laughs> I- and we have to say, you know, this it's Hitchin side, you know, they have had a tough season, but seasoning, but they are turning things around, as Lee said. But they're decent, you know, that they're, they're not to be taken the mickey out of. And it's just, you know, academy side mixed, you know, with a few first teamers can go to toe to toe with them. It's it's good for us. Um, and it's always good to get Zane on the score sheet. So, you know, goals, goals, goals. Yeah, it's good for Zane to get two goals. Uh, 167 games, the second time he scored uh, two in a game. Cool. And I thought he was going to get his hat trick Monday, but uh, or Tuesday, whenever it was, but uh, wasn't didn't really happen. So, what not much else to talk about then <laughs> on Tuesday night? <laughs> well, the thing is, of course, now um, we're out of all the cups, so we've purely got the league to concentrate on now. And it's a tough one, Saturday, isn't it? Maystone United, the uh, website, or whatever it was, called it a top of the table clash. That's eighth versus third, is a top of the table <laughs> clash. <laughs> If we win, I think we got up to about fifth. If we lose, we could go down to 11th. 
So uh, Maystone, 10 games unbeaten, includes a 4 0 win against Dartford and a 3 2 win at Ebbsfleet. On current form, it doesn't come much tougher than this. You know, it's <laughs> if we win, you know, it'd be amazing. But it's a perfect, almost, almost in a way, it's a perfect game for the lads to respond in. You know, just go out there, give your all after what has been a disappointing week. We know it's going to be difficult. Months. We know. Yeah, well, difficult months. Yeah. Yeah. If we know how Maidstone play. We know what they're like. We know they're strong, full time. But Ian, Ian will have done his homework, and he's just, he's going to put a side out there that wants to win. But I say, will the quality tell of Maidstone? I mean, four 0 against Dartford. And Dartford have been on a, you know, a poor run themselves, but they are clearly one of the standout sides in the division at the minute. Yeah. Mind you, they've only won le- one league match at the park in the last 51 years. <laughs> yeah. mm, funny, that. Yeah, Mr Taverner <laughs> clutching on to the last fabric of positivity in the entire podcast. Well done, Tav. Nice to. Well done. Uh, no City L boys in the Maystone squad, but the manager Hakam Hayretin. He had a little spell at the park in the late 80s. If I could Bob look it up, I'll tell me how many games it was. Is it still Hakam? I mean, I'm... Was it two, six, two and a half? Well... Oh, two seasons ago, Dave, we went down there, didn't we? Quite early season, we got thumped 4 0, didn't we? Um, and that was an awful day. Um, I think Hakan was boss then, wasn't he? And by the end of that season, well, by COVID, you know, he wasn't looking particularly strong in his position. Um, but yeah, that made that day down in Maidstone was was he boss Jake shocking. or was he assistant to uh, John Still? Oh, he might have been assistant actually, yeah, you're right, but he, he was involved, wasn't he? Um, and they made stone that day. They just blew us yeah. off the park, and we can't let that happen at all. I mean, we kept it nil nil for a good fifteen minutes, and they just ran away with it. <laughs> um, but you know, you can't be again. We talked about it earlier, but Saturday there should be a good crowd. Maidstone will travel well. I'm sure the Saints fans will turn out despite recent defeats because it's an important game. Um, but if you're two three nil down by the seventieth minute, you'll people are going to lose their interest again, aren't they? You know, it is a massive game in terms of just keeping people interested and keeping the Saints firmly in the hunt. I'd say we're only in the league now, but with how many games we've got, I'm glad, you know, in a way, it's probably best throughout the Cup because all the Cups, because we've got so many games to come in the next four months, which again feeds back to, should we strengthen the squad? Maybe, you know, (laughs) try and get some players you know, we aren't relying on 40-year-old David Noble to be able to more than hobble. So, you know. We don't get any easier. We've got another side uh, just above us on Tuesday as well. Chipping them at one point above us. But then again, they have played six games more. <laughs> Only the six. Um, which, which highlights the point that you made, Jake, about the number of games we've got remaining. We've only played 17. Most of them now 19, 20 and above. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the game in hand, as we know, but you've got to win them. You've got to go out there and get the point on the board. And chipping them on a Tuesday night is not a particularly fun place to go. It will be difficult. Um, you know, Mate, yeah. it's not a fun place to go on any night, exactly. let alone, let alone exactly. a Tuesday night. Exactly. Dave, I hope you're not planning to drive there, because, I mean, after Monday night... <laughs> You'll have to walk, mate, over yeah. this way. <laughs> <laughs> Right, in case you don't know, on on the way back from uh, Chelmsford on Tuesday night, Jake and I were in an accident, the car came over to our side of the road and managed to avoid most of it, but he smashed into a fair chunk of it, wrote the van off. Um, Fortunately, no injuries. There's more to it than that, but I can't say. Um, Just want to say thanks so much for all the messages. I I swear you had a load as well, Jake, some of the emails and some of the (laughs) comments. uh, They are so funny. Um, It does, does give one a list. And uh, all the other comments received as well are much appreciated. Yeah, I mean, it was almost, I mean, it almost makes you think that like, you know, the American presidency, they can't have the vice president and the president the same plane. Maybe we can't all travel together anymore in case, you know, two of us go. Uh-oh. Oh, bliss. Yeah. bliss. To be fair, Jake, what you, <laughs> what you didn't hear, mate, is on uh, Tuesday, he was, he he'd almost accused you of sort of like offsetting the weight of the van. <laughs> so it sort of helped to <laughs> swerve into the... I um, bet he did. <laughs> but at what age do these sort of geriatrics have to sort of stop driving now, though, Taz? Because you're just a menace, mate. You are the reason why my car insurance is sky high, then, for people like you. Joy riding around the back lanes of Essex, mate, doing donuts. 
<laughs> I would like to echo Dave all the comments from supporters and also people from inside the club. Really lovely. Really appreciate reaching out and checking checking we're okay. And we were just about. I mean, I mean, Essex countryside is lovely at midnight, isn't it, Dave? By the side, it of was a great full moon. It was a wolf yeah. moon. It was fantastic. It was, yeah, it was absolutely lovely, wasn't it? <laughs> Checked all the stars, mate, we're there, present and correct. I have time to do that for a couple of hours we're standing there. <laughs> I will, you know. Why didn't you call me, boys? I'd have come out. Yeah, of course you would, Lee. <laughs> Talking of which, uh, uh, I think we're looking for lists for Tuesday, just chipping them. <laughs> <laughs> should, we, uh, should we predict the uh, next two games? <laughs> yeah. It's a very dangerous ploy. It's, it. it's a very dangerous ploy. Goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so. It would be so St Albans and so this season for us to come and get something uh, against Maidstone. But I can't see anything other than a, a home defeat. I really, really can't. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I think, I hey, think you're, I, you're having a lucky week. Uh, let's uh, be a bit more positive, maybe. <laughs> exactly. I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go. I'll go two one Saints. I don't know if that's. If that's what are you basing this on, Jacob? Mainly shock, to be honest. <laughs> what um, I was going to say. Yeah, well, I seem to be that, positive, not talking sane. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hit my head? We don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah, 2 1 Saints on Saturday. You know, that, like you say, Lee, it'll be very us to turn up in front of a good crowd, suddenly <laughs> make it all connect. Turn you know? up, win, um, lose the next five. Yes. Win, but, win the six, and then, you know, we go but, again. Oh, my God. I mean, it'll be, of course, we're recording this on Thursday night, so we don't know if. Ian will act upon whether he'll make any signings maybe tonight at training for tomorrow that'll be announced. So be interested to see if keep your eyes out, see if Saints do do anything tomorrow. Um, hopefully they do, fingers crossed, because we need them, don't we? Well, when we talk about these good gates this season. Um, if we lose again Saturday, our home record is going to look pretty atrocious. And how long are our newfound supporters who weren't there in previous seasons, how long are they going to stick with it? Our away record is still good, only one defeat so far. We, but, we, were, we were saying this a little while ago, weren't we, Dave, um, Lee? Even we said, you know, the true St. Albans City normally comes out January, February in the cold, in the rain, when we're not playing quite as well. Um, and it is going to be a test. But also, that is a test of how much a sport you actually are. Yeah. You know, anyone can go with a team that's, that's getting to the fresh and out of the cup and, and flying high in the league. It's when you're getting shat on, boys, at the bottom of the table. That's, that's, that, is, that is when you find the true. <laughs> the true core of a supporter. Um, you know, you, you can't support us when we're winning if you can't support us when we're not. So it's a case of get behind the boys. Yeah, it's not great. It's not pretty on anyone. But if we can sit there and endure it for an hour and a half, then so can you. Um, and they're young, you know, they, you know they'll they learn. But I think this is no, but it's, it's a true testament though to what the club have done off the pitch. Yeah. Sadly, it's just not being mirrored by performances on it currently. No. No. And I, I'd, I'd love to be in humble pie and see our crowd just stay the same throughout the season because it's the atmosphere is much better and it's great <coughs> to see so many people there. And finally, Silver City is being recognised in the community and that's what we've always wanted. So hopefully that continues and hopefully win on Saturday and that'll help. Well, you're always looking for good news and the uh, club tweeted some good news this week, congratulated uh, Sean Jeffers on his 50th game for the club and scoring on Monday. It's a pity it was only his 48th game. That is good news, isn't it? Yes, yeah, cracking news. Wasn't it, Wait. Dave? Was it Dave Dijon's hundredth appearance on Saturday? Uh, a week before. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There you go. So, yeah. have you have you told them? Or <laughs> oh, you point? knew he would. Cracking. You knew you there was going to be an email going backwards. Before. You corrected them on all the mistakes. You've been here all night. I mean, uh, if you want, you look at Saturday's team sheet, which puts the next game. Uh, which against Hitchin Town, Hertfordshire Senior Cup, Tuesday, 18th of December. These, these are the views of David Tavener, not, not all a lot of us. Do. We don't make wow. them up, we just repeat them. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, Absolutely. And should we predict Chippenham as well while we're here? Go on then. Uh, I'll go 3 1 Saints. Yeah. You know, Score draw one all, yeah, and hopefully their bugler won't be there. <laughs> You're obsessed um, with that bugler. That's the very niche <laughs> reference. <laughs> it's what we'll always remember chipping them for, isn't it? But, oh God! Well, I, I remember it's, it's not the happiest hunting grounds in Harden Jewish Park, so 
it's um it's another tough one, isn't it? But if we want to be in the, around the top seven, every week's going to be tough now. It would be it would be really really enlightening to get a view from other supporters about what they see on the pitch and how they think the season's gone to date. So uh, get in touch. Just Jacob, going to give him the Twitter handle, my friend. Yes, yeah, at a pod for the Saints. Um, find us on Twitter. Um, and yeah, tweet us your views, DM us as well if you don't want to put it in public. Um, and yeah, or you can email us as well. Um, Dave will put the email on the screen and in the uh, in the post below as well. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. Obviously, we're a bit of an echo chamber here, but um, yeah, it'd be good to hear what other people think, both the positives and the negatives. We don't really want to be negative all the time about the football because we, we want the Saints to win. So it would be nice to hear of any sort of positives that people can think of from the last couple of weeks and if anyone is selling a second-hand van get in contact <laughs> as well because we're going to need one of those pretty soon aren't we Tavs <laughs> uh, just looking forward to some fixtures uh, somebody mentioned the other day which is a good point um Dulwich Hamlet away on the 19th of February bearing in mind that most of their games are selling out of late apart from funny enough against Dorking only got half the usual crowd they normally get um you might want to order tickets as soon as they become available if you uh, intend going down to Champion Hill. Yes, I think that's Saturday the 19th of Feb. So, yeah, anyone wants to go, get your tickets now because they've, they've already sold out for their game against Concord on um, this Saturday coming. And I doubt Concord have got many away fans there. So, <laughs> yeah. They've got many home fans. <laughs> <laughs> Deary me. <laughs> got no fans? <laughs> oh, great. Well, are we, are we done already? Have we flogged this horse enough? Yeah, we have cheered everyone up immensely over the last half an hour. Hey, well done, boys! Our next podcast will be back with six points. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so For hopefully we'll see as many of you as possible down the park Saturday and um, at the bus station on uh, Tuesday as well. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. <laughs>